Hey everybody, I'm Brandon72mo, this is the Mammoth Patriot, and I'm about to find out if it'll off-road. It will. Uh, this is the, well, it, this is a four-way tie this week, even though there's only two vehicles. This week and next week, every vehicle received seven votes. You can vote for the vehicles that you want to see by clicking on the link in the description down below. And we're off on our ascent in a, what should be a fairly capable, if not lumbering, off-roader. Not exactly the fastest, and as you can see there, not exactly the best uh, controllable vehicle. It suffers really bad, the Patriot. Uh, it suffers really bad from understeer. It just does. It's kind of a factor of it. Massive, impractical, garish SUV. But it was a symbol of excess in the early 2000s. That was ultimately killed off by the gas crunch. I'll admit that when uh, the real life car that this is based on, the, the Hummer H2 first came out, I kind of liked the look of it. I'm into kind of boxy looking uh, SUVs. Like I really like this. I like uh, the old Honda Element, you know, those boxy things. I never liked that little Scion car though. It's a little too small. But anyways, um, it, it, the Hummer just suffered that gas crisis it killed it plus it was just they were just ostentatious shows of wealth so, I mean underneath this thing was a Chevy uh, Tahoe but that's all it was it was just a Chevy Tahoe with the 6 liter V8 in it and yeah for a lot more money and it was just people trying to show off I remember they were, where I live they were everywhere and then suddenly they were nowhere they were just gone it is, it is, as soon as they took over the roads, it seemed that just as instantly they all vanished, and now you very rarely see one. I think that's probably true in most places. But, given its weight, and given that massive engine, the Hummer was never a very good off-roader. It just wasn't. Thankfully, in the game, the Patriot doesn't suffer quite the same fate. Still has a big V8 under the engine, but uh, seems to be maybe not as heavy as its rubber counterpart, uh, which makes it a little bit more sure-footed. Though even on the sharp bends like we just passed back there, it does suffer from understeer, even in the dirt, even at low speeds. It just doesn't have a very good turning radius either, so it makes it a little challenging around some of the twisty bits. But it's sure-footed enough that we're getting up mountain in a pretty decent amount of time for an SUV and it's gotten up fairly drama free I mean there's been no real problems no massive wheel spin keeping me from going where I wanted to go it's not to say the wheels aren't spinning but since it's all wheel drive there's always a set of wheels getting a good amount of grip so it keeps moving forward so yeah no fuss no fret just a, a pretty easy ascent up the mountain, getting the thing turned around here to climb up, not a problem. And just a little bit on the throttle, and we're up. Just that simple. And we are up to the top of Mount Chile at 3 minutes, 12 seconds. Will it off-road? Of course it will. I mean, look at it. You kind of expect that it would. But that means we now have to take it back downhill, and that's where things could get a little bit more interesting. Uh, because the Patriot has terrible brakes. This is a fully upgraded vehicle. It's not mine. Uh, you can see the guy there in the back seat, non-credit rocket. Uh, this is his Patriot. I don't own one because they no longer spawn in the combination of uh, visual mods that I want. I want one with a bull bar and lights. They used to spawn that way in the game back, way back in the day, but they haven't since like the Beach Bum update, I think is when they stopped spawning like that. And there's only one way to get it now, which involves uh, modders, so I don't want one. And there we go. Problems with the shit brakes. Couldn't shave off enough speed. And then the weight of the vehicle caused it to spin around. So I just kind of rode the the reverse trajectory until I found enough room to turn around. That's not going to be the only problem that this thing runs into because of its bad brakes. I'm trying to keep the speed off as best as I can. Uh, it's not always going to be doable, though. It's, yeah, this is going to get ugly pretty quick. Not as tragic as we've seen some others, but 
It, it is definitely going to struggle. There we go. That turning idiot just barely gets around there. Didn't quite get it lined up for that uneven bit of the path. Oh, well. Here we go. I went up on two wheels. Didn't have enough braking power. And ouch. Ouch. And oh, barely stopped in time. Thankfully, it had the grip to uh, pull us out of there. Cars with lesser grip, eh, we would have been on down the mountain. But yeah, kind of shit breaks. We've already lost the window and kind of already have a, a slight dent going on back there by that uh, uh, right brake light. So yeah, already not looking good for the Patriot. We haven't even started the damage descent. Thankfully, Rocket didn't mind that I beat the hell out of his SUV. Continuing on the downhill, just trying to keep the speed off through engine braking and a little bit of regular braking. And it didn't want to really land flat there. Was controllable, though, through that turn, surprisingly. Uh, I was expecting it to want to roll over there, but no, it held it, which I was really shocked by that. I, I really thought, driving through that bit back there, that it was just going to roll over. So you can see, it does like to go up on two wheels now and then when it comes into the weird different things in there. And I jump, two wheels. Too much speed, spin around, come to rest against a felled tree. I don't know if it is felled so much as it looks like it just kind of maybe fell over on its own. Um, anyway, continuing the descent on the last little bit of dirt here, trying to keep my speed down so I don't slide off again. Gonna get a little too greedy out here on the asphalt and not be able to navigate this corner because of the massive amounts of understeer. It just wouldn't go around that. So we went into a little more off-roading where normally we're on the pavement. But we've made it down to the bottom, coming around the final little bend. Commander Hobo, of course, already down. And we're now down in a sideways stop. Three minutes, 13 seconds. So let's take it back to the top of Mount Chiliad where we'll fling it off the side of the ramp and see how it does. This is based on an older model in the game, so it does have pretty accurate uh, damage physics. So it should take quite a beating. A lot of windows are already gone. Ooh, the hood flipped up, but so far it's holding on. I don't think that'll last. Oh, yep, there goes the hood. It gave up. Looks like, yep, we just lost a couple doors as well. So already, already some serious damage to the Patriot. Vehicles this big, well, they tend to hit every single little nook and cranny that there is on the way down. Trees, boulders, uh, parts of the rocks sticking out of the side of the mountain. Anything that it can hit, a vehicle this size is going to. Those right doors look like they're in a bit of jeopardy there, but they're staying closed now. Oh, nice backflip. Well, I spoke too soon about the doors staying closed. They keep coming open. Looks like, excuse me, looks like they uh, refuse to stay completely shut there. Looks like they might be sticking out. I don't remember if I have that on my damage screen. May have to edit that back in. Nice jump through there does all right to this bumpy muddy bit uh, about as good as can be expected uh, the weight and the traction that this truck gets as I slam into a pillar uh, the weight and the traction that this truck gets does help it perform fairly well down through here it is sliding around quite a bit but nothing that can't be controlled with the throttle got it nearly stuck there I was really surprised we got out of that I thought we were gonna be pinned but as we make our final little climb back up hit the wood pile of course we did and we are down in one minute 57 seconds let's take a look at the damage of course the hood's gone uh, all the lights all the wind and most of the windows are gone the left doors are gone and the right doors won't close has bent wheels it has moderate engine damage i don't know if you can hear that or not has significant body damage and it gets terrible gas mileage and that brings us to our next vehicle the Imponte Nightshade, speaking of poor gas mileage, a muscle car. I love the Nightshade, and it, of course, it is in that four-way tie with seven votes. Please vote for the vehicles that you want to see. We've got some interesting ones lined up uh, for two weeks from today. You can vote for any vehicle in the game you want to see. 
and you can vote for it as many times as you want. So you can totally, one person can rig the outcome of one video. Which makes it a lot of fun. I like the Nightshade. I don't drive it as often as I really should for as much as I like it, mainly because it sits in a garage across town and I always spawn in my uh, corporate headquarters, so I kind of forget to go check out my muscle cars on my first character. But I do like the Nightshade. It's a car that I wanted to own for a long, long time, but never had the space for. But then once we got the ability to have a sixth property, as well as the extra 60 spaces that are afforded with the CEO executive garages, well, a Nightshade was quickly on my list as something to get. It may not look like it's moving with all that much speed, though this car is capable of quite a bit of straight line speed. But it's fairly steady. I mean, it's getting really good grip. I'm not suffering too much from any wheel spin. I'm just getting, I'm light on the throttle to get the speed going. And then as the speed piles on, I get heavier on the throttle just to keep the wheel spin down. Nice shades doing great with this. Uh, just, I was very surprised. I honestly expected a bit of a struggle. I mean, the Nightshade's not a difficult car to drive on pavement, but I just expected in the dirt that it was just going to want to spin its wheels nonstop. But that seems to not be the case, because a little bit of wheel spin there, but it, it's minor. It, it really is controllable, so that keeps the back end in line. As I say that, it comes around and contradicts me, but that was more about that little bump, not so much about wheel spin causing it to want to spin out. A lot of wheel spin there to get that push, but I was able to let off, find where it could get grip, and then get right back on the throttle. Pretty amazing if you really think about what this car is. So it's low to the ground, based on like a, what, a late 60s, early 70s muscle car. But it's doing really well, and it's a beautiful car. I, I just love the nightshade. I, I think it of the uh, Trans Am and Camaro based I should guess Firebird and Camaro based cars that we have in the game. I think the Nightshade is probably the best looking one. So that back end as we take out a hike here, that back end is very uh, Jaguar inspired. But that's okay. We, we know what this car is meant to be. And it's getting a really decent time up. I mean, we've had supercars that don't make the three minute mark. And it looks like the Nightshade might just do it as I take it into the water. And gonna make our turn up the side of the hill. A lot of wheel spin at first, but uh, I'm able to find enough grip to get the car to go on up the hill. And we are up as we take out one more hiker in three minutes, nine seconds. Will it off road? Yeah, surprisingly, surprisingly well. Barely missing that uh, three minute mark that we kind of use as a really good speed. But now it is time to take it back down the mountain. The Nightshade actually has decent brakes for what this car is. So it's not gonna be too much of a challenge, though there may be a hiccup here or there. Honestly, I can't remember, because I recorded this car on February 19th, back when it was sitting at the top of the board. And then right before I got ready to um, edit the Will It Off-Road video for that week, uh, somebody came along and voted for something else, several somethings in fact, that caused the Nightshade to get bumped pretty far down the list. So it's just now that I'm recording uh, six vehicles at a shot that uh, the Nightshade finally gets to make its debut. This footage has just been sitting on my hard drive forever. Well, that's forever in YouTube terms. I mean, it's almost three months ago that I recorded this car. So I don't remember much about it, because when I edit these, I, I watch them in, like, quadruple speed. And I don't really pay attention to what's happening. I'm just kind of looking more for my edit points in the video. Kind of got some air over the uh, uneven bit there, so not a good thing, but not a bad thing either. Brakes holding up well. And even when I do have too much speed, it, I'm able to get the car to come right around most of these corners. Had a little too much speed there, couldn't make the turn and hit the rock. 
big jump, and I slowed down way too much, which is why the nose dove so much. Oh, but listen to that exhaust snarl. Such a lovely, lovely sound. Here's another big jump. Oh, much more flat that time, and Blade Shadow has died. Rip. Don't know what he was doing that he died, but he's dead. Another big jump. Why a beautiful landing, actually. That was... That was near perfect. Oh, but the car then decides to spin out. Not really sure what happened there. I'd have to really go back and analyze that footage over and over again to figure it out. It's been way too long since I recorded it to remember. Ah, another drink of water. Excuse me. Allergies are in both ports today. Just trying to stay off the gas as I make turns. Oh, the tree of many crashes claims its first victim in a long, long time. Well, yeah, it's been a long time since anybody's hit that tree. There we go. We are back down on asphalt. A lot of body roll, but a very controllable car. Never mind. And we're going to continue down around the last couple little bins here. And we're down, and again sideways, and backwards. Two minutes, 48, almost 49 seconds. Let's take it back to the top of Mount Chiliad and see what type of damage this car sustains. We're off. Gracefully flies. Easy to control midair. Look at that. Look how flat it is. That is how I like a car to handle in the air. Just really easy to get back under control. Though it is taking quite a beating. And this is it. This is as far down the mountain as we're going to get. I'll switch to a DNF timer here eventually. Don't you worry. But uh, yeah, I made reference uh, to these trees a few weeks back when another car nearly got stuck in there. Well, now you know the reason why I panicked a bit. Because I knew that this was possible. I have... The, the wheels aren't touching anything. Uh, rocking it back and forth, or trying to rock it back and forth, you can see me turning the wheels left and right and left and right, does nothing. This car is perfectly wedged between the trees and the side of the mountain. And despite my best efforts, it's never getting out of here. Not at all. It's This is where it stays. Nothing is going to get this car out other than maybe being hit by another car. Sped up the footage uh, to 500%, so you're seeing it five times faster than you normally would. Uh, just to show you, I gave it the effort of kicking it uh, from both ends, in fact. But because of how high up it is in that tree, I spent most of the time really just kicking the ground. Uh, there wasn't anywhere I could really get except right in the front where I was kicking the engine. And, well, you may remember way back when I did the Vapid Slam Van Custom. Kicking the engine can result in explosions. And I'd kind of like this car, my hope anyways, was that I could get it unstuck with enough kicks. But you could tell it's just, it's not budging. Not at all. I did not manage to move this car one little bit. And of course, because of the angle it's at, I also can't get back in it. Um, it's just... It's stuck here. Forever in a tree. Matter of fact, if you drive on Mount Chiliad today, you will still see my nightshade parked there. Well, maybe not. But you know what? Lesson learned. Avoid the tree. And let's take a look at our damage. All the lights and all the windows are gone. It has slight engine damage because I kicked the shit out of it. Uh, the interior is filled with sap and pine needles, and the driver is now stranded. Hey, if you guys enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Hit that like button, get subscribed if you haven't already, and leave a comment down below. I'm Brendan72Mo, and I'll see you in the next video.